This week on the Modified World, we bring you Trigger's Piercing Essentials. So stick around. Welcome to the Modified World, the weekly web show about body modification. The people who do it. The people who get it. Why it matters. I'm JC, I'm the senior piercer up here at the world-renowned Pangea Piercing. And this week, I'm going to be talking to you about how I do tragus piercings. First of all, there's a lot of misconceptions about tragus piercings. No, they won't paralyze your face in any way, shape, or form. Yes, they can get nasty infections. Thankfully, that's blessedly rare. Tragus piercings are actually pretty old. I used to think that tragus was some sort of made up word that came from western civilization. Turns out it's actually, they're actually mentioned in Indian censuses going back over a hundred years. That said, I think the tools and techniques have come a long way since the days of ancient India. Of course I do them a little differently than quite a few people are going to be doing it in general. I do not use tri-bevel needles. Of course, we don't use guns on these things, but I do not even use tri-bevel needles on them. I use either biopsy punches or in places where the legalities prevent you from using a biopsy punch, I will use what would be called a chamfer or O-needle. So first steps first, I'm going to get our ear cleaned up with a little sterilized Q-tip with a little bit of prep solution on there. I'm not super picky about prep materials. I feel like alcohol is probably good enough, but back in the day we always used iodine, but there's a lot of people who kind of react to iodine. So nowadays we're using a PCMX based prep material that works in about 30 seconds. Next up is single drop of gentian violet. You might look at that and say, wow, that's a small tragus. And it is kind of smallish, but I want you to open your mouth for me as far as you can. Oh, now close. Now open again. Now you see how much actual room we have here. Of course, we're not going to get this far up into here. We kind of want to try to stay towards the middle. And I like to keep, you can go ahead and close your mouth, sweetie. Uh, I like to keep it towards the middle of it. So... I'm going to be looking right about there for our deal. Now notice when I press in too, it doesn't roll off the side. It just kind of dents in there. If when you press on it, like say you're back here and it tries and it's rolling this way, that's too shallow. That's a good indication of being too shallow. Of course, too deep though, and you wind up deep in the ear canal. And that's not a good thing either. It's always a series of compromises. But this is not a bad ear to work on. So of course my next step is after I've got somebody prepped, clean, marked, and they've approved those marks, the next step is I'm going to get my sterile gloves on. Now, of course sterile gloves are a bit of overkill, because more than likely, yes, their hair will be touching it here pretty soon. However, I like to eliminate any potential of contamination, so we go ahead and spend the money and take the expense of doing sterile gloves. Plus, one of the good things about it is these sterile gloves come wrapped in some sterile paper. So, I can tear a little piece of that off and I'm going to make a drape for her ear so that I can keep my hands out of her hair. So, tear a little corner off, like so. Throw it away. Take it. Fold it. Pull it again, tear a little corner out. And now we got a nice little homemade cheap drape to help keep the cost low but still keep the quality high because that is important. All the time I hear from other piercers about how, you know, the, their boss just won't let them this, won't let them that because it's all about the money and the, ex the expense. And I understand it does, it can get expensive. That said though, we never cut corners even while trying to maintain a lower, you know, as much value as we can towards the client. Now, 
I do these a little differently than what a lot of people have seen. I clamp them, and I clamp them for good reasons. The reason why is because I use either a biopsy punch or an O-needle. The reason I do that is because it removes a little bit of the cartilage and allows skin to just regrow over the sides of the hole because cartilage does not heal like soft tissue. You know, the more efficient way is to just grow skin over the sides of the hole. So I keep everything compressed with the with a pair of slotted forceps and then I use the O needle on there and it keeps everything compressed. It keeps that skin from pulling away from the cartilage underlying, which is important. If the skin pulls away or tents away from the cartilage, you get infill with, with fluid and that will be, translates into swelling and discomfort. So it helps keep it a lot happier and a lot more accurate too because that tissue will roll real bad. Piercers already know what I'm talking about when I say this. That the tissue will roll real bad if you don't keep them clamped. So I clamp them and I use O needles. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start getting clamped up on this guy. Just like so. Now I'm going to get lined up right now, but of course I'm not doing anything just yet. Remember you're in total control over this party. Mm -hmm. But we look good though. So whenever you're ready, sweetie, you can give me that good deep breath in and out. See, now notice when we do the piercing that kept it all nice and stable, all nice and didn't roll anything crazy. A little saline on here, cool you down a little bit. How you feeling? I'm good. Dizzy, nauseous, lightheaded, anything crazy like that? No. Now for these insertions, I hold the jewelry in the forceps like this. I kind of hold the jewelry, or kind of butt it back up in here like so. There it goes. Hold it up like that, and then just transfer in like so. Drop that gem on there. And then I use forceps to reach down here and kind of grab and squeeze them together, just like so. Now I'll clean her up a little bit. And we'll call it good. There you go. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm fine. My eye watered a little bit. So that was my show. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you at least were entertained or possibly learned something. Let me know how I did. Leave me a comment in the section down below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, you ought to because I do this every week and bring you some behind the scenes knowledge about either how piercings go down with lifestyles of professional piercers is just other stuff that I find interesting so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video and be sure if you actually if you actually support what we do and you want to see the end to a bunch of crappy YouTube videos about blowing your ears out with silicone in your bedroom well then share this video share it on your your Facebook your Twitter your Tumblr if you have one and of course be sure to stop back by next week for another episode of Modified World